So, just um, any injuries, um, just be conscious of what you're carrying today. Super bossy with your body. Just make sure that if you come across any pain that you're not normally used to, please stop and let us know. Um, and so this morning, um, we're going to be doing some uh, stability work. We are going to uh, be using some of the equipment. Make sure you've got plenty of space around you uh, and that you're not going to crash into anything. If you need a finger against the wall or, or something like that, that's absolutely fine because we're going to try and maintain our, our optimal posture. Um, if you're struggling with any exercises, please don't push it. Go for the optimal posture rather than whole global movement. Okay. So, I'm going to mute you all now. Uh, yeah. I'll just tell you, I'm, I'm having a bit of a problem with my um, knee. So, I won't be doing any squats or anything. No, okay. We're not on to squats this week. So, we're going to. So, right knee or left knee, Jane? My right knee. Okay. So, is it when. Uh, so, um, it was giving you some problems through those movements last week? Well, I. I know that I need a knee replacement, I've okay. been told. So I don't know what I've done, but it's just working. Okay, all right then, good. So we'll be working on those glutes as well. So I'm got any others while we're here? No, good, okay. So I'm just gonna mute you all. That's my problem. <laughs> hey, shush you, Darren. <laughs> okay, so, and I'll, I'll allow you to unmute yourselves just in case there are any issues, okay? So you can mute if you need it. Right. So you need your ball. Uh, so get hold of your ball. Okay. And here comes the sunshine. So I'm going to take it a little bit off. Okay. So if you can find a wall, I know some of you have got, you look like you've got some space around you. We're going to take the ball and come up against the wall. I'm going to come up against this one and get the ball into our glutes. So we're going to come sideways on. So instead of last week we were in the glute max, we're going to come across the side and come onto that pocket of muscle at the side of the hip. Okay, so we're here. Okay, so coming up against the wall. Oops, get out, dropping the ball. Come up against the wall and then stand sideways onto the wall and roll up and down. Oh, <laughs> okay, so that's my homework. So we're here, I'm just going to see, I'm going to tilt you down a bit so you can see what's going on. So we're here, okay. So if you look at my seam of my trousers are here, I'm just at the top of my IT band. So my IT band comes up, I'm in into that pocket of muscle at the side of the hip here. All right, Jane? There. Okay, and you're up against the wall, so you come up against the wall. Okay, so if I use this side of the thing here, so I'm up against the side, I'm going to take it in, take my legs off to the, so I'm sideways on, and just roll into that side muscle here. Okay, and it can be quite uncomfortable. So sideways on a bit more, Sue. I think you're coming more into your glute max. So turn round towards me. Sue, turn round towards me. That's it. Sideways on. So we're into here, the side of the muscle. So you want to be sideways onto the wall. Instead of having your back to the wall, you want to be sideways onto the wall. Okay. And again, you're checking in with those muscles around the hips. These are the muscles that are going to be quite tight. The more we're working at home, if you are working from home, they're gonna be quite tight here. Max has come to say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> what do you want? My husband not prepared this morning. So one more time on that side. And then swap over to your opposite side. So swap over to that left buttock. So again, I'll just show you where we're going. We're sideways into that hip. Okay. Above the IT band. So pretty much where your seam 
is, come to the top and then you'll see or feel, more so feel, a small pocket of muscle at the top of the IT band on that left hand side. That's it, Vicky. If you find it, if you're tight, it will make you squeak as it made me squeak before. <laughs> okay. And I'm quite unfortunately, because you're all muted, I can't hear you squeaking. <laughs> okay. If you've discovered one side tighter than the other or more intense, then I want you to either stay on this side or then go back to your right hand side. So if you've discovered one side is a bit more intense, go and repeat or continue on both uh, on the opposite side. If both are the same, just spend these few moments just doing both. Okay, so we're really trying to loosen out through these hip muscles. Okay, well done everybody. So you've got a tennis ball at home after this session. Don't just put it away, use it. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come, uh, put the ball off to one side. So I'm just going to rotate this round again so you can see me. And we're going to start with our foot on the block. Okay, so... Uh, um, instead of the instability, if you've got something a bit more solid, uh, try and use something a little bit more solid. And we're going to place our right foot onto uh, the more solid option. Okay. And here we're going to peel the right, uh, sorry, left heel off the floor and then lower back down. So we're just gently coming into that right knee. And I'll show you sideways on. So as I peel the left heel off the floor, and lower it back down, my right knee's gonna bend slightly. So it's a bit like the movement we were doing last week, but again, we're coming into those core stabilizers. Okay. Now, if that feels okay, we're gonna add a one leg stand. Okay, so dropping down, the movement, the pelvis stays nice and level, and the movement comes through the knee bending. So if I show you, with my, on my right side, here I'm pushing up, then I'm going to bring my left leg up, lower back down, and then my right knee bends. So push up through the heel, into one leg standing, lower back down, and bend that right leg. Okay. So slow movements, but absolutely getting into those core stabilizers. Try not to use those arms to balance you. Put your hands on your hips if you need to, so you can make sure that that pelvis is really level. Okay. Your right leg should be starting to ache a little bit. <laughs> For three. Good, nice tabletop position. Two. Just watch that lean over to the side, Sue, so don't lean so far across, okay? So if it's a smaller movement here, that's absolutely fine, okay? It doesn't have to be a high movement. What's most important is that the pelvis stays level and we're not tilting over to the side. So it doesn't matter how far we lift the leg, what we want to do is stabilize through the center. Okay, let's swap sides. So the first movement, so we've got our left foot on the floor or on the book and we're peeling the right heel off the floor and lowering it back down again. Okay, so we're just getting that heel peel, maintaining that level pelvis and just coming through the right foot. So we want to work through those right toes. Okay, and then add, stabilize through that left leg, add your knee lift. And again, so I'll show you here, sideways on. As I add the knee lift, I can be here, okay, that's fine, or I can be here, okay. So anywhere within that range, but what we do have when our hands are on our hips, we know that, or we can feel what our pelvis is doing as well. So nice, smooth, steady movement. Good. And note which side is more stable than the other. 
okay, for three, excellent, peel up through the toes, and last one, excellent, well done there, release off, shake your legs out, okay, so we're going to come on to our two cushions, <laughs> or your block, I haven't got any of those squidgy blocks, so <laughs> I've got two cushions, okay, so, this is going to challenge our ankles some more, okay? So I'm just going to show you, so I'm just going to tilt this down so you can see what's happening. You don't need to see my head here, okay? So I've got that level pelvis again. I'm coming onto my right leg, so I'm stabilizing through my right leg, and I'm lifting my left leg off the floor, okay? So you should feel your ankles starting to really do some movement here. Morning, Gail. I'm teaching the class. Yeah, I think everybody's in. <laughs> We're six of us this morning. No, it looks like everybody's in. <laughs> I'll catch up with you later. Bye for now. <laughs> oh, wobbles go. Don't push Vicky over, Darren. <laughs> Cheating. <laughs> if you do need a finger to the wardrobe, get a finger to the wardrobe. So just be conscious that this right leg is really working hard. The right ankle's working really hard to stabilize you. Okay, for three. Get out of those arms, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Two. Oh, and one. Excellent. Well done, everybody. Okay. Swapping over to the left leg. Okay. So, coming into our neutral position. So, hands on hip. Stabilize through the center first. That's it, see, well done. And then slowly lifting that right leg off the floor. It doesn't have to be high. Okay. So, we don't, because if we take it higher, we end up hinging, hinging through the pelvis. So, try and level that pelvis off. Soften the supporting knee. Okay, stop, spot the wobbly side, and again, we're just trying to lift up through the pelvic floor, soften the arms, oh, well done Vicky, <laughs> okay, excellent, for five, four, three, two, level off that pelvis for me guys, two, and one, and release off there, oh, hold on, I've got some more coming in. Admit. Admit. Good morning, Fran. Morning, Lorraine. <laughs> well, we're into stability. So while we're doing it, okay, we're coming up to the other side. So you need two cushions. So we're doing some instability work, okay? So while you're getting set up. So the rest of you, we need to be on our right leg again and on two cushions. So ladies, you need to go and get two cushions. Okay, so we're standing on our right leg, we've leveled off the pelvis, okay, and we're going to take a step back, okay, and then step forward, over, okay, sorry Darren, that's a rough, <laughs> that's like a horse's chop, <laughs> okay, over the top and back. So, Fran and Lorraine, you need two cushions, so we want some instability. We're doing some dynamic stability this morning. Okay, we're coming out to the side now as well. So, as we step over, come onto your right leg and take a step out to the side. Back to centre and then behind. So, we're coming round the world, okay? So, forwards on one leg. Out to the side, no squats on this one, back to centre and behind us. Okay, so forwards, push up through that right heel, out to the side, back to centre, and then draw back. Okay, a couple more on that side. I'm just going to... Can you hear me, Lorraine? No. Okay, last one on that side, and then change legs, just having a look, a close-up of you as well. 
Good. Okay, so we're on to our left leg now. So we're standing on our left leg. Okay, and then up, step forward, and step back. <laughs> There's some wobbly bodies here this morning, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> okay, so just that forwards and backwards to start off with. Pelvis is nice and level. Back through. I'm just going to... Oh, Fran, hooray, okay. Okay, we've got our audio on. Yes, I've got my audio on. <laughs> okay, and then add the side step. So as we come forward, we're coming back and we're coming out to the side. We're not squatting, but we're, we are, sorry, <laughs> we are trying to get our balance. Take that step forward, out to the side, back to behind us, forward, good, one more set, that right, left leg should now be working super hard, well done everybody, and release off there, excellent, shake those legs down, okay, so we are going to uh, put the, the um, bleh, pillows off to one side, and we're going to come into some tandem work. Okay, so now I'm going to take this a little bit further back. So, oh, not into the sun. We've got skylight, so it's just making sure that, as though the sun's beautiful, we want to not have a star or that. Okay, so tandem. One leg at, at the top of the mat. Okay, we're going to place one foot in front of the other. I've put my right foot in front of my left foot. Just be conscious of where those heels are, everybody. So we want to make sure you can either do your split movement. So here I can be offset or I can be one foot right in front of the other. Whichever works for you and your balance. You're going to take uh, both feet drawing through the crown of the head. Okay, we're going to float the arms. So we're floating those arms forward, drop the shoulders down, and then we're going to do our bow and arrow movement. Okay, so the right arm is bending. We're rotating the upper body round, keeping that pelvis facing forward. Draw back, and then change sides. Okay, good. And change legs. So either take your step forwards on your mat. If you're not on a mat, just change legs. Okay, same movement. Rotate that upper body, nice movement through the upper body. Breastbone stays tucked in. Hold on. Come on. Okay, so take that step forward, drop those shoulders. You're rotating the upper body. But make sure you come back. So, Catherine, make sure you've come back to your arm float position before you make that next move. So, each time, come back to your arm float and then make your move. Okay, a couple more. So walking towards the end of the mat, if you're on the mat, float those arms, but keep that breastbone nicely soft. Drop those shoulder blades, guys. So there's a little bit of shoulder blade action going here. Oh, hold on. Hi, Gail. Um, Lorraine's having problems getting in um, for some reason. I can't, I'm trying to admit her, but she couldn't connect before. So um, would you be able to just give her a shout if that's okay? Oh, hold on, I'm on speaker again because I'm teaching. So Lorraine's having problems getting in for some reason. Fran's, Fran's come in. Go on. Yeah, uh, hold on. 
so invites. I'll just see if I can invite you. Sorry, guys, we're just trying to. It will get easier. It will get easier, everybody. Um, and but I've just uh, send you a thingy. Okay. Hey, you in? So Lorraine was having issues. Okay, so you've got to the end of the mat. Okay, and now we're going to reverse. Okay, so we're putting our hands in prayer position. So our hands are in our front of our chest. They're staying in between our breastbone. So then we're going to reverse. We're going to peel that right heel off the floor. Take that step behind us. And here we're going to rotate that upper body. Okay, come back to centre. Drop the shoulders. Rotate round to the opposite side. Come back to centre. Take your step behind you. Just be conscious of where those heels are going. So when our body wants a little bit of help with our stability, we might find that the uh, sorry, the heel will come inwards. So take that step back. If you're you haven't you're not working on a mat, just be focused on alternating between the two. The pelvis remains facing forward. And you rotate that upper body. Well done, Jane. <laughs> you all right, fan? Say again. Hold on, I'm going to unmute you. I can't get through at all now. Say again, fan. The rain can't get through at all. Yeah, J uh, Gail's just trying to, um, she's come on to try and help her, I think. Hi. Nice. Okay, so just working your way one foot behind the other, heels are in line as you come back, but rotate that upper body, shoulders are down, good, keep those hands in with the breastbone ladies, there's some uh, movement through the breastbone, Penny Levitt. <laughs> okay, so keep those hands in the centre of the breastbone, the pelvis is face forward. Excellent. Okay, last one. And release off there. Okay, good. So we're going to open up our uh, QL muscles, the back muscles. So we're coming into our neutral position. Feet are hip distance apart. And we're gently going to ease down to the right hand side, back to center, and over to the left hand side. Just checking in with those back muscles. Try and keep space and length through the upper body. Okay, so, and also the shoulder that follows over, make sure it's not coming up towards your ear. We're working those back muscles and those waist muscles here. Lift that pelvic floor on the left. Good. On the right. One more on the right hand side. I'm going to smooth you out of the sunshine again. Hopefully. Good. And release off there. Excellent. Well done, everybody. Okay. We're going to add to that a little bit more. So we're over to that right hand side and we're going to reach up with that left arm coming over the top. Good. And again, create length into that left-hand side. Okay, if it feels okay to do so, lifting through that pelvic floor. Gently ease round to your centre position. Okay, lower the arm and restack. Right arm comes up towards the ceiling. Over to the left-hand side. Create that space. Again, we're working those QL muscles a little bit harder here. So gently ease forwards, come back to centre, lower the arm and restack, reaching up over to the right hand side, come into those back muscles, feel them working, supporting you, navel to spine, drop the arm, restack, over to the left hand side, slowly ease forwards, drop the arm and restack, one more time on each side guys. 
good. That's it, coming over to the centre. Make sure those knees stay nice and soft and the pelvis is nice and uh, stable. And again, think about what your breastbone is doing. So as you've come over, just think about engaging those abdominals a little bit more. Okay, so we're back onto our book. If you want to challenge yourself a little bit more, you can go on your soft block. Okay, but we're going to do some leg circles here. So we are going, I'm on my block because my balance is um, not perfect. <laughs> so we're back onto our right leg and we are going to stand onto that right leg. We're going to hover the left leg off the floor and we're going to draw anti-clockwise circles. So anti-clockwise circles. Good. So supporting leg is working hard. Just soften the knee a little bit. Lifting through the pelvic floor, try and keep that pelvis nice and level. If you're on the cushion or the soft block, this is going to be super challenging for you. Okay, let's change direction. So we're now working in a clockwise direction. Okay, the softening. So we should start feeling it into those buttocks, into those legs on the right hand side. That's where we're working. The three, two, and one, excellent. Okay, swap sides. So stabilize on that left leg, level off that pelvis, peel the right heel off, and we're gonna again start with, trying to level off mine. So if you need a finger to the wall on this one so you can maintain that optimal position, take a finger to the wall. Try and keep your leg nice and long if you can. The movement's coming through the buttocks, through the hip. So anti-clockwise uh, and then change. So we're going anti-clockwise. If you've gone the other way, doesn't matter. But what's important, try not to lean over too much. If you find you're leaving, leaning, get a finger to the wall. Okay, and note the difference between the two. Try not to use your try not to use your uh, arms to balance. Try and level off. Should be really burning into that buttock now. <laughs> For three, two, and one. Well done, everybody. Okay, release off there. Okay, so we're going to release into the hip. Oh, <laughs> nice wiggles, Darren. Okay, so we're crossing the left leg <laughs> behind the right leg. Okay, left leg behind the right leg. And we're going to swing the left hip over. So we're just releasing through that left hip. We're going to reach over to the right hand side. So I'll turn my back to you. So I've got my left leg behind my right leg. Okay, my left arm is up. I'm swinging. I'm now moving those hips over to the left hand side and creating a lovely long stretch through those left buttocks or glute meads. Okay, come back to center and change. So swap over. So my right leg is now behind my left leg. I'm reaching up with my right arm. I'm going to push my right hips over to the side, out towards the right hand side, and lengthen up through the right arm. Okay, reach, reach, reach. Okay, one more on each side. So cross over. So the side, the leg that's behind you, the leg that's behind you is the arm that you're reaching up. And if you've noticed one side tighter than the other, go back to your tighter side. Okay, now you might need a, um, uh, a wall for this one because we're going to see if we can take hold of our right leg 
and draw the leg behind us into a hip flexor stretch. <laughs> okay, now you might want a finger to the wall to do this. You might want your theraband, you know, to hook the theraband underneath. Nice, good. Oh, well done, everybody. Okay, see if you can open up the chest. So instead of curling over here, make sure that your upper body is nice and lengthened, opening up this hip flexor at the front. You can, if it feels okay, you can draw it further back. <laughs> and then you challenge your stability a little bit more. Good. And swap. So taking hold of your foot or your theraband, getting the theraband underneath it, drawing that hip flexor open. So you might want a finger to the wall to help stabilize you. Okay, breastbone stays connected, so we don't want to arch into that upper back and force our upper body forward. We want it nice and tight into the abs. Draw the leg behind. Okay, and release off there. So we're going to take that right leg in front of us. We're going to bend, I'll show you sideways on because this is better for you to see. So the right leg is lengthened. Okay, we're just easing forwards, coming into the back of the legs, lifting through the navel to the spine and flexing the foot and then flattening it on the floor. So your right knee is bent. Left leg, sorry, yeah, rubbish. Left knee is bent, right leg is lengthened, flexing through the ankle. Well done, nice long back, engaging those abs. So we've got a hip hinge going on here as well. Okay, let's change sides. Just note the difference between the two. For three, two, and one. Good, okay. Again, you might want a finger to the wall on this one. So we are going to, come on, you're getting warm, Vicky. <laughs> so we're gonna come on to our left leg and we're going to put our right leg in the inside of our uh, left leg. So this is tree pose, okay? You might want a fingertip on the wardrobe or the, or the wall. <laughs> Good, try and keep your optimal position. Then we're gonna take it forward and then open. Okay, so take it forward and then open. <laughs> well done everybody, good balance. You might want to have been on the flat floor by now. If you're doing this on your cushions, hats off to you. <laughs> Last one, oh, okay. I'm pretending I've got a finger against the wall. And release off there, okay. And then the left foot is coming on the inside of the right knee. And again, finger to the wall if you need to and open and close from here. The pelvis stays facing forwards. <laughs> Note the difference between the two. Okay, for three, two, well done, and one, and release off there. Excellent, well done everybody. Okay, how are we doing? So, we're going to come down onto our all fours position. We're going to do some uh, movement against our centre. I'm just going to see if this will move. <laughs> I need a, a tracking device on my... Uh... <coughs> Didn't grumble about the sunshine, should we? Right, so I'm going to tilt it so we've got the all fours position. Okay, so tucking the chin in towards the chest, lengthening through the spine. Working those fingertips down towards the floor. And let's just hang there for a moment. So we'll do our pistons. We haven't done those for a couple of weeks. So we'll just do our pistons, releasing into those shoulders, relaxing those neck muscles, just checking in with your body. For three, lifting navel to spine. Two, active through their pelvic floor muscles. And release off there. Okay, let's walk those hands forwards into our all fours position. Spread those fingertips out so you've got some nice movement through the fingertips 
and we are going to just lift up through the abdominals here. So we're going to do some ab bracing to start and activate those abs. Now when I, you can't see it here, I'm just going to come into my uh, t-shirt, so hopefully you'll be able to see it a bit better. When I relax my abdominals, there you go, you should see a little pot belly occurring. And then when I tense my abdominals and lift up through the pelvic floor, I'm not coming through my back, but I am lifting the uh, abdominals and contracting the abdominals against gravity. So let them go. And then when you contract them, okay, lift up through your navel and exhale. So in this position, all fours position, shoulder blades are down towards our back pocket. Our neck is beautifully lengthened. Okay, and we're just coming into our abdominal bracing. This shouldn't affect what's happening to our back. So that is, there's the key, is that the back doesn't arch. It doesn't really change position. The movement comes from the abdominals. If you can, see if you can exhale on your contraction. Okay, so as you exhale, lift in the pelvic floor and release off. It's opposite to how you feel you want to work. Okay, lift in that pelvic floor and breathing out. Inhale, relax. So again, just activating through the pelvic floor, get active through the abdominals for three, two, and one. Okay. Let's just ease back into our shell stretch to release off those wrists. And then back into our all fours position. We're coming into our pinpoint. So we are taking our, I'll show you closer to on the left hand side because that's closest to you. We're going to come into our cat's paw. Okay. And we're going to alternate from one side to the other. So the elbow bends. The shoulders stay stable as much as you can. Imagine you've got a tray of drinks on your shoulder. You'll feel the weight distribution change through the body slightly. But see if you can keep those shoulders separated, lifting up that breastbone from the mat, neck nice and long, working into those deep neck flexors. Good. Okay, so if I show you head on, pelvis stay stable. Good. Okay. So we're going to add, so the right arm is in cat paw. We're going to extend the left leg behind us. Okay. And if it feels okay to do so, we've got a little lift and lower of that left leg. Now, while you're just checking this posture, so we're tapping the floor, it's not coming up very high because we want to keep that upper body nicely stable. But just check in with your right leg, just see if it's um, come across the midline of your body to help stabilize you. Just take the lock off those elbows just a little bit, working into those shoulder muscles. And take a break whenever you need to, but otherwise we're five, four, three, two, and one. Release off there. Okay. Relax those uh, wrists. Okay. Just watch those neck muscles, guys. When we get tired through the shoulders, we tend to collapse those shoulders in towards each other. Okay. So lift up through the breastbone and also those neck flexors here. So if I put a pole on the back of your head and your bum, it would uh, be joining, it would be hitting. Okay, let us come into cat paw on the left hand side. Extending the right leg behind and we're adding our little lift and lowers. Okay, little tap. Jane, on that one. So, oh yeah, no, it's fine, sorry, it's just a position, you're good. <laughs> I thought you were coming out to the side for some reason, but it's, uh, no, that's good. Well done, everybody. Catherine, I can't see you at all, so Jill, I'm just assuming you're okay. <laughs> You've gone up into the windows, that's it, just give me a little tilt. <laughs> Excellent, that's better. Okay, again, pelvis is nice and stable, take that break. We should be working into those abdominals quite nicely here. Elbows soft through the right arm for three, two, and one. Release off there, release those wrists. Good. 
Okay, so we are, um, I'm just thinking about uh, stabilization. So if you've got a your cushion, okay, just place your right hand or your soft block. So right hand or soft block underneath your right hand. Okay, so again, we're just challenging. Penny, if it's too much on those wrists, just come into your fifth position, okay? Just be conscious of uh, it's um, challenging the uh, wrist more on the right-hand side, okay? So we're going to come into cat paw on that left-hand side. We're going to lengthen the right leg away. And here, see if you can gently rotate across, uh, away from the midline of the body and then come back to center. So I'm gonna show you head on because you might get a better uh, idea of what's happening. So here, and then I'm going to rotate round to the side and back to center. So it's just off the midline, okay? Now the abdominals are working super hard here. We're trying, if it's too much, don't come off your midline and come onto your cat ball. Okay, so the whole body moves. It's not just the leg coming out to the side, okay? So here, it's just a slight move. I'll show you with my bum this way as well. Okay, so the leg is long. We're not lifting that leg. It's about a centimeter off the floor. Just listen to your body. Try and maintain your optimal position on this one. So if you're finding you're leaning too far over, don't come off the midline. Okay, so be bossy with your body on this one. Okay, good. Let's swap sides. So release those wrists. Okay. So you should feel quite a lot of work going in through those abdominals as well. Active through the pelvic floor, everybody. Okay, let's come over. So I've put my cushion under my left hand. I have um, come into my cat paw on my right leg arm here okay going to extend that left leg leveling off the pelvis so imagine you've got that tray of drinks on your shoulders and your pelvis and gently come across the midline sorry away from the midline so you move as one okay back to center again you should really feel some quite a lot of work through those abdominals we're not moving too far Hold on, so release those wrists whenever you need to. If it gets too much with your hand on the cushion or the block, come into your uh, neutral position without the cushion or the block. Good. For three. Nice front, good. Two. And one, release off there, come into your shell position. Well done, everybody. <coughs> Okay, so we're going to come over onto our right hand side. Again, you can use your cushion or your or your block. Um, we're coming onto the right hand side, heads long, okay, and we're going to do some uh, one uh, side kicks here. So our legs are lengthened out on this one. Last week we had them bent, and that challenged or didn't challenge our stability quite as much. So now we've got both legs bent. Oh, sorry, lengthened out. You can put your fingers to the floor if you wish to in front of you. But the collarbones are open and we're going to raise that uppermost leg and we're going to draw some figure of eight. Uh, well, in our minds, we're drawing figure of eight. <laughs> what our body is actually doing could be something completely different. And they stay at hip height. Got a nice foot there, Vicky. <laughs> good, soften the knee. So we want to be coming into the buttocks. If your stability is good and your upper body isn't gonna wobble, then take your hand off the floor. Okay, so you're just progressing that movement and challenging your stabilizing muscles that little bit more. But if you find that you wobble through the upper body when you do this foot movement, then 
we want to have that hand in front of us. Okay, for three, two, and one. And release off there, bring the knee in towards the chest. Okay, one leg kick here. So we are going to take the leg forwards with a pointed foot and then flex the foot coming behind us. Now the key with this one again, and I'll show you in this position, is that the upper body doesn't move. Okay, so we're taking the leg forward, and as we flex the foot, we draw slightly behind us, but just be aware of what that upper body does to uh, stabilize you. So we want to keep the movement fairly small to start off with, just so that we can get active through the muscles that we're interested in. Again, we'll be feeling it into our buttocks, hopefully, as well. And don't forget to have elevated the rib cage or the waist area off the mat. Okay, so just making sure that that spine stays parallel to the mat. We haven't sunk into the mat. We've got a nice long back. For three. Good. Imagine you're painting the skirting boards <laughs> and then scraping them off as you come back, leading with that heel. Two. And one. Well done, everybody. Bring your bum up. Give your bum a rub. Okay. And then we're going to swing round. So pulling back up, swinging round, and coming over onto our other side. So again, thinking about a nice long leg here, you can either have your hand in front of you, okay, or off, but just be conscious of those abdominals working really hard. We're going to come into our figure of eight. So we want a nice long line. This is really challenging the upper body. Keep those shoulders relaxing down, keeping the breastbone open towards the front of the room or the upper shoulder lifted towards the ceiling okay and again they might not be perfect figure of eights but just visualize them <laughs> and see if you can change directions so reverse okay so just reverse that direction if it's coming into the calves just soften the knees take the lock off the knees slightly you don't have to bend them completely, but just take the lock off, and we should find the movement coming deeper into the hip. Knee stays facing forward, foot stays facing forward, active through those leg muscles. For three, two, and one. Well done. Okay, take that knee in, rub your bum. Good. Lengthen that leg back out again. And again, we're coming into our side kick. So our leg goes forward, and then with a flex foot, we come behind us. So the key here is what your upper body is doing. Now, if you're finding that the upper body moves, just put your hand on with fingertips at the front, but still trying to keep that top shoulder lifting up towards the ceiling. Visualizing, if you want to, painting skirting board with your foot going forwards and then scraping it off as the heel leads and takes the leg behind us. Again, using that arm if you need to. Rib cage here, the waist, the lower part of the waist is lifted for three, two, and one. Release off there. Okay, rub that bum. So you've got um, a couple of options with this next one. We're coming on to our backs. If you have got a softball or a roller near to hand, you can place it under your bum. But we're going to do the same exercises. Um, having the roller or the softball will just give a little bit of a challenge, but um, that's optional. So we're coming over onto our backs. If you have got a softball or a roller, and I've noticed a couple of rollers, so I will show you what we're doing with the roller. So we're onto our backs. If you have a softball, 
it's going under your bum. So here's my softball. That's going under my bum here. It gives me a little bit of what, uh, wiggle or balance. And then if I've got my roller, that's going under my bum as well. Okay, the roller will take you higher. If you haven't got either, and that's absolutely fine, we're into our neutral position. Okay, so you can either put your roller or your softball underneath your sacrum. So between your cheeks of your bottom. Okay, so we're coming into our scissors. Okay, so we're starting with our right leg into tabletop and just alternating from one side to the other. So breastbone, draw it down in towards the mat, draw those rib cages in. So the collarbone the collarbones are open towards the ceiling and our shoulder blades are open on the mat. Just checking in with those abdominals, getting active through that pelvic floor. And whatever position you're in, the next time that right leg comes into um uh, tabletop, we're going to draw it out to the side and then draw it back in. So we're just working that right leg now. If you're on the ball or the uh, roller, this will create a greater stability challenge. So make sure that knee comes out with your uh, foot. We were here last week, but without being on the roller. So again, we're working through those pelvic stabilizers. And then again, we are going to draw some circles. So we're doing our one leg circles. Now imagine that you've got, we're still working with that right leg. Imagine that you've got a uh, dinner plate, maybe just hovering above your right knee and you're trying to trace the outlining rim of that dinner plate. Relax those toes. Active through that left side to help stabilize you. If you've gone clockwise, change direction, vice versa. So now change in direction. And again, there might not be circles and that's fine, but see if you can smooth off. If they're not, they're more like squares. See if you can smooth off those edges. Working deep into the hip. Okay, for three, two, and one, bring that knee in towards the chest and give your right knee a hug. Okay, good. And then right foot comes to the floor, left leg comes up. So if you're on the roller, just be conscious of your rib cage. So tucking that pelvis, so the roller will take you higher. Jane, just be conscious of that. So here, make your a ski slap. So instead of arching into that upper back, draw the upper back, um, sorry, lower back down a little bit and get that nice long line through the front of the body. So we're starting off with our hip twist. Okay, so hip twist level three. Again, if you're on the roller or the um, softball, just be conscious of how much support you're asking from your shoulders or your neck. If you want to, you can take those arms across your chest and this will give you feedback as to how much you were relying on those shoulders. The right knee stays vertical. And if you're lying on the floor, again, I would suggest just taking those arms across the chest so that we are working deeper into the stabilizing muscles. I've got a wiggle on my right leg here doing this. So I'm just going to lock it down a little bit more. Just be focused and super bossy with what's happening to that pelvis. Okay, let's add our circles. So we're going to circle in a clockwise direction. Again, visualize the knee stays bent on this one. So visualize the uh, plate above the top of your knee and you're just trying to circle around the rim. Drawing the breastbone in towards the chest. If you're getting any discomfort in that lower back, if you are on the roller or the ball, come off it and come into a double knee hug. If you're flat, excellent. If you haven't already, reverse direction, reverse direction. Good. 
good for three, two, and one. Release off there. Bring that knee in towards the chest. Give it a hug. Okay. So we're going to come into our shoulder bridge position. If you have got the um, ball or the roller, just bring it off to one side. If you want to, you could, and you have got a ball and roller, you could put one foot on the ball and the roller. Okay, so if I've got, you could come into this position. So if you've got a softball, you could put your left foot on it. I'm showing you left foot here. Okay, and we're coming into our shoulder bridge. So that would just give you that extra little bit of a challenge. If you haven't got either, then don't worry. We're coming into our shoulder bridge. So feet are hip distance apart. Okay, we're squeezing into our buttocks. We're gonna squeeze up into the buttocks, making sure that they're firing, and then lower back down again. Open up the collarbones towards the ceiling. If you're on the roller, you've got one foot on the roller. So the rollers come out to the side. And I'll show you on my left hand side again. So I've got one foot on the roller and I'm coming into my shoulder bridge from here. If you've got an elevated uh, foot, then you need to be conscious of your pelvis staying nice and level. Okay, so we want to keep that pelvis nice and level. One knee will be higher than the other, but we want to be squeezing into those buttocks. Again, just bring focus into it. If at any time you feel it's coming into that lower back, just make sure that you come back down, release it off, and really try and activate into those buttocks again before you come into your shoulder bridge. We're coming into a straight lift here. We're going to come and hold that position in our shoulder bridge, and we're going to add a little pulse. So we're just easing into the base of the buttocks, top of the hamstrings, if you feel any of it coming into those hamstrings, draw those feet closer to the bottom. So drawing them in a little bit more closer, and then it will hopefully deactivate the hamstrings just a little bit more. Okay, so right into the buttocks. For five, four, three, two, and one. Okay, bring those knees in towards the chest. Just release off any tension that you might have incurred into that lower back. Good, one foot down, second foot down, back into our shoulder bridge. Arms can go up towards the ceiling. If you're flat on your back, if you're on, the, if you're, uh, on one leg, or change legs on the uh, ball or the roller. So just change feet on the ball and the roller. And we're going to come into our pulses again. Okay, so just getting some endurance through those glutes. For five, Four, three, two, one. Okay, hold that position and we're going to float the right arm overhead. Circle round to the side. Now, if you're in the tighter area, you can uh, come into the, if you can't bring the big circle all the way round to the outer edge, put your hand on the top of the shoulder and just work with the elbow. Okay, drawing back to center, float the left arm overhead. Again, if you're going to hit anything, please don't. Put your hand on the top of your shoulder and circle around, big circle with that elbow. Okay, swap sides again. So either a circle with the long arm, as long as you're not hitting anything, or with a shorter lever, shorter arm, hand on shoulder. Okay, one more time on each side. Try and keep the connection through the rib cage, okay? So make sure that when you float that arm overhead, that the rib cages aren't lifting away from the hips. We want to float rather than a reach. So we want to engage into those abdominals. So we float. Finish on your left hand side, release off there and bring both knees in towards your chest. <laughs> Good. Okay, we're coming into a release through that lower back. So knees are together, uh, feet are together, and we're gently going to drift both knees over to the right hand side, back to center, and over to the left. 
try and make sure that your knees are piggybacking one on top of the other. Okay, so I'm going to show you here. So if we take the knees over to the right hand side, the left knee rests on top of that right knee. The left foot comes off the floor. You can take your arms out to the side if that feels okay. And you can also add your uh, neck rotation. So you're looking at the opposite side to the way your knees are falling. Just be bossy with those knees again, making sure that they clamp together, really bringing some focus into those inner thighs. Make this an active or dynamic uh, movement. So a release movement, but also strength. And again, just check in. So if you're noticing one side is tighter than the other, come back to center and then drop down to your tighter side or away from your tighter side. And release off there. Well done. Bring those knees in towards your chest. Take your hands on top of the knees. Okay, and do your breast stroke leg movements. Okay, just opening up those inner thighs, making some really nice movements through the ball and socket joints. Getting some mobility, especially if we've restricted our movements in the last few days, or if you've been out walking in the sunshine. Maybe releasing off a little bit more. Okay, and rolling over. Okay, I'm just going to unmute you all. Unmute all. There you go. <laughs> well done, everybody. Thank you. Are you okay? No. Oh. <laughs> so, um, just some, you know, stability work, getting those glutes firing. <laughs> Are you all right, Fran? <laughs> Good. So again, there is a, a waiting room that you can get into. We'll get it. Will get easier doing this. We'll become more au fait with it all, won't we? But initially, it's sort of. <laughs> but Lorraine did. She's going to come in on Wednesday, Fran. So she's going to. It must have been a link or something that I just invite her, but I couldn't get her in. That's why Gail came on. So cool. Are you all right? Yeah? Thank you very much. Hey, finish on a smile. Hey, you're like Amy, aren't you? <laughs> I don't know, your body doesn't know whether or not it's a false smile or a real smile. It still releases the same good chemicals. So even if you're smiling and you look like a right mad person, <laughs> your body doesn't know. <laughs> So have a good week, guys, and if you're back again on Wednesday, I'll see you on Wednesday. Throw in some more variations. What I'm trying to do is there'll be just a similar similar sections because some people do come on a Monday to come on a Wednesday. And Amy's teaching tomorrow evening, uh, so Amy and Darren are going to teach as well, so there's some variation in teaching styles as well. So you should have good access to um, different exercises. <laughs> okay, take care, thank everyone. You. Okay, thank you. Okay. Enjoy. Cheers, you all. Have a good day. Bye for now. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.